In a previous video, I showed you a few images generated by software developed by Tim Vanderelli and Michael Schneider. Tim and Michael referred to these lines as isopotential lines. Although these lines are extremely idealized compared to what we see in the ferro lens, the lines in the ferro lens do seem to be behaving similarly to the lines generated by the software especially when both the North and the South Poles are visible at the same time. The true meaning behind these lines still needs to be debated, but hopefully this, this video will offer some more clues as to what is going on. This, in this paper, which I re reviewed in a previous video, the lines are referred to as isopotential lines. So until further notice, that is what I will be calling them. There are some people out there, and I won't be naming names, but there are some people out there that are arguing that they are not lines of potential. And I'm going to be invested, and I'm still investigating that, and we'll talk about that later. However, I happen to agree that there is some relationship between the lines that the ferro cell displays and the lines that Tim and Michael's awesome software are showing. And so here is an example. Clearly, the lines that their software generates are very similar to the lines seen in the ferro lens when you build a magnetic system that matches the geometry of the input to their software. So in this image, uh, they, we put the north and the south pole in this configuration, so north, south, north, south, north, south, and in this ferro cell image, they put the north, south, north, south, north, south. And this is the image they got in the ferro cell, and this is the image you get from their software. Now, it's hard to look at this image and say that there's no relationship between these ISO lines and the ferro cell image. Although the ISO lines are extremely idealized compared to the real life situation of the ferro cell. Okay, so here's another image I generated, I showed in the last video or in, in a previous video. On the left is an image that I created using the software, but here I only put one pole into the magnetic field generator or the isopotential generator. So notice how it looks a lot like the equal potential lines of a point charge. Okay, we talked about that in a previous video. In a charge field, the equal potential lines represents voltage. So these are e lines of equal potential or lines of equal voltage. However, the lines on the left can't correspond to voltage, at least not directly. So for the sake of the rest of this discussion, I'm just going to refer to these lines as ISO lines. So they're lines of equal something. Here's the same image, but with the iron filings overlaid, so you can see both the radial lines and the circular lines of the field geometry. But here's the problem. According to mainstream, there is no such a thing as a magnetic monopole. Okay, so if there's no such thing as a magnetic monopole, then how was this image generated? According to Tim, and I, I, I believe it was stated in the paper, when the software sees only one pole in the input image, it assumes the other pole is very far away. So to test this further, here's what I did. I created a magnet for the software, but I placed the two poles of the magnet very far apart. This image represents one magnet with the poles really far apart. It is not two monopoles. Then I ran the software and this is what I got. As you can see, the ISO lines are very circular, just like they are in the equal, equal potential lines of a point charge. When the poles are really far apart, each pole, pole behaves like a monopole in Tim and Michael's awesome software. Okay, 
So now I'm going to move the poles a little bit closer together. As you can see, the ISO lines between the poles are a little bit distorted. They're a little more distorted. Okay, now we're going to bring them a little more closer. And as you can see, the, the lines between the poles are even more distorted. So the closer you bring the poles together, the more distorted the ISO lines are between the poles. So here's an image I generated of a, magnetic, of a magnet with two poles fairly close together. And in this image, I also show the orthogonal field, which could represent the iron filings. So if you were to place iron filings in a magnet, this is uh, approximately where they would, um, they would form. So um, this, of course, is a very idealized situation. This is what the software generates. So the software generates the, the ISO lines and the orthogonal lines, which basically represent the iron filings. And here is another picture of the ISO lines, but I overlaid it with, with a picture of a magnet with actual iron filings. And as you can see, they are exactly orthogonal to each other. They're exactly orthogonal. So this tells me that the ISO lines cannot be wrong. They cannot be nothing. They have to correspond to something. They are perfectly orthogonal everywhere in this image as expected. Which brings us back to this picture. Okay, this picture and the previous picture seem to be depicting the same field geometry. Okay, so these three seemingly different situations appear to be showing the same field geometry. One, the electric dipole. Two, the two wires from the Steinmetz uh, schematic. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, from the Steinmetz schematic. And three, the magnet. Okay, so what does all this have to do with magnetic monopoles? I am told that magnetic monopoles don't exist in nature, but electric monopoles do. Okay, so when electric charges are really far apart, really far away from each other, the field surrounding them looks something like this. The radial lines will be basically linear and the circular lines will be basically circular. There will be very little distortions. But when the charges get close together, the fields surrounding them look more like this. In a similar manner, when you have a circuit with the send wire on the left and the return wire on the right, when the wires are really far apart, the fields surrounding the wires will look something like this. There will be very little distortions when the wires are far apart. Of course, you have to have current running through the wire in order for the field to form in the first place, but if current is going through the wire and the wires are really far apart, this is what the field will look like very close to the wire. But when the wires are much closer together, like in the Steinmetz diagram, then the field surrounding the wire looks more like this. Now, using Tim and Michael's amazing software, we find that when the north pole of a magnet and the south pole are very far apart, the fields look like this. There are very little distortions. These circular lines look very circular. It looks exactly like we would expect the equal potential lines of a point charge to look in isolation. Keep in mind that this is one magnet with the poles really far apart. Okay, it's like a freakishly long bar magnet. These are not monopoles. This is a magnet with the poles really far apart. But when the poles are closer together, then the fields look more like this. You get the distortions. So what is this all telling us? Let's start with the case of the two wires. 
Steinmetz calls this the electric field of a circuit. Okay. First of all, you must keep in mind that this is just a schematic. It's an idealized schematic. At first glance, it might look like, like there are two wires, but this is only a cross section of the circuit. In actuality, in a circuit, there is only one wire. There is no such thing as a circuit with two wires, and there is no such thing as a single wire conducting current down a line. There must be a return wire. That is why it's called a circuit. Okay, there is no such thing as a of current going down a wire without a return wire somewhere. When the wires are really far apart, the field geometry looks like this. Okay. So um, now let's talk about the positive and negative charges. I think that everyone will agree with me that there are an equal number of positive and negative charges in the universe. If the universe contains one trillion positive charges, then there must be one trillion negative charges. Every charge in the universe must be paired with another charge, even if it is very far away. When they're really far apart, the field geometry looks like this. They look like monopoles. When the charges are close together, the field geometry looks more like this. It looks like a dipole. Since there are equal number of charges in the universe, then technically there is no such thing as a mono charge in the universe. Every charge has a companion charge somewhere in the universe. In a similar manner, every wire in a circuit has a return wire. Okay, and every north pole has a companion south pole somewhere in the universe. If the poles of a magnet are very far apart, then their field geometry is going to look exactly like the field geometry of a point charge. Okay. Which is do, looks exactly like the geometry surrounding the wires that are really far apart. Okay, So when the magnetic poles are far apart, they look like point charges. When two wires are far apart, they look like point charges. So the moral of the story is, long story short, monopoles do not exist in of themselves in the universe. North poles always have a companion south pole. Current flowing down a wire always has a companion return wire somewhere in the universe. And positive charges always have a companion negative charge somewhere in the universe. So all this talk about magnetic monopoles is really just a misunderstanding of this simple fact. So with the understanding that there are no monopoles in the universe, let's get back to the isolines. What do these isolines represent? In a previous video, I showed how the equal potential lines of a point charge correspond to voltage and we talked about that a little bit earlier too. But in a magnet there is no such thing as voltage technically. Fortunately there is an analogy for this in the domain of magnetism and it's called the magnetomotive force. The magnetomotive force also knows, known as magnetic potential is the property of certain substances or phenomena that give rise to a magnetic field. Magnetomotive force is analogous to electric, electromotive, um, electromotive force or voltage in electricity. Okay, the sun also generates MMF, particularly in the vicinity of sunspots. So if these isolines, okay, If these isolines correspond to lines of 
equal magnetomotive force, also known as magnetic potential, then it is not only appropriate, but it is accurate to call these lines, okay, iso lines of potential or isopotential lines. So it is my opinion that the ISO lines generated by Tim and Michael's awesome software are analogous to the equal potential lines of the electrostatic charge. I'm going to say that again. It is my opinion that the ISO lines generated by Tim and Michael's awesome software are analogous to analogous to the equal potential lines of electrostatic charge only they are lines of magnetomotive force and not voltage directly of course this is just an educated guess i'm just guessing this based on the principle of incommensurability and the analogy between the magnetomotive force and the electromotive force so in conclusion, okay, there's a bit of a debate going on right now about how the lines seen in the ferro cell uh, are related to the ISO lines generated by the software. If you're looking at this picture, it's really hard to imagine that they're not related. It's, these images look like they're related and they are related and I believe that it is perfectly fine to refer to these lines as isopotential lines. Thank you very much. Have a good night.